Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Thursday, April the 4th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It is game day, the Vancouver Canucks take on the Nashville Predators in Nashville, in the Vancouver Canucks, wait for it, their penultimate game of the season. Yes, it's their second to last game of the year. You guys know I love using the word penultimate, and they have a chance to play a bit of a playoff spoiler tonight. Now, they can't keep Nashville out of the playoffs, but they could severely hurt their chances, the Predators' chances, of winning the Central Division. Nashville comes into the tonight's action tied with Winnipeg atop the division and one point ahead of St. Louis. So three teams all fighting for top spot in the Central, obviously fighting for a better matchup in the first round against a wildcard team as opposed to one of the other two teams. Meanwhile, teams two and three are fighting. They're going to play each other, but one of them will need home ice advantage, of course. So lots to play for for Nashville. With respect to Vancouver, guys are still trying to make impressions. Guys are still in their first week of the league, so to speak, or guys are even making their NHL debut, like defenseman Brogan Rafferty, member of the all-name team for the NHL. And we know about Rafferty's, you know, his story, the way he got, the long way he got to the NHL, and also the way that, if you Google his name, the Craigslist killer from 2012, 2013 will come up. So be careful when you're in Google and you're typing in, in Brogan Rafferty. Both those stories, especially that story, has been well covered in local media recently. But he gets a chance to debut tonight. Playing on the right side, right shot defenseman, and uh, paired with Ben Hutton tonight. So our, our defense looks like this. It's Alex Edler with Troy Stetcher in our top line. Then it's Ben Hutton with Brogan Rafferty. And then Quinn Hughes, of course, once again with Luke Shen. So it's a good chance for Rafferty. You know, he's a RFA at the end of the season. Because you because of his age, you can only sign him for one year. In essence, he's going to play two games, likely today, of course, and then Saturday against St. Louis in the finale. So he's playing for a new contract. Obviously, the Canucks will sign him to something. There's no way that they're going to sign him for a week, basically, and then let him go. But how he performs in these two games may determine what kind of contract extension or contract, contract offer he gets and whether or not, you know, it goes towards him starting the season with the team or down in Utica. We've got a lot of time to worry about that, but let's get excited to see a right hand, a right shot defenseman, Brogan Rafferty, make his debut tonight. That means there are four healthy demon on the outside looking in. Biega, who gets sat tonight after a, a recent stretch. Then there's Pouliot, there's Tevez, and there's Sautner, and Breezeball is hurt. So those are the D men with the Canucks right now. Up front, the only change is Jake Vertanen draws in for Sven Berchi. Jake Vertanen playing on the left wing today, which is kind of intriguing. Kind of exciting. We've seen a lot of his goals come from the left side. Him coming, rushing down that side, even though he's been playing as a right winger. He's played a little bit. He's played left wing in the past before. And he's getting a chance, most importantly, to play with Pedersen and Besser. So that's really exciting. And Travis Green was saying he wants Vertanen to create opportunities with the size and with his forecheck. Oh, speak, speaking of size, by the way, I meant to mention about Brogan Rafferty. What's appealing about him is he's got good speed. And he's got good size. So it's not like he's a small guy who can skate fast, nor he's a big guy who can't skate well. He's got good speed and he's got good size. So I'm looking forward to seeing Rafferty bring that to the blue line. And you, when you look at it, uh, you know, when you match it up, we are much weaker on the right side than we are on the left side. Looking ahead to next year, you could argue if they re-sign Edler, you have Edler, Hughes, and Hutton, and possibly you'll levy on the left side. On the right side, establish... Uh, NHL blue liners, you only have Tanev and Stetcher, and then behind that, it could be Shen, it could be someone like Rafferty. So we'll see. So size and speed, look for both in Brogan Rafferty tonight. Okay, back to Jake Vertanen. Speaking of size and speed, Travis Green likes Vertanen's size and speed. He wants him to create opportunities for Pedersen and Besser on the forecheck. So that's why Vertanen is going to get a shot on the left wing today. And what an opportunity it is to play with those two all-star players. Then we have Horvat with... Pearson and Erickson once again. Horvat and Pearson is in particular showing great chemistry in the past uh, half dozen games or so. Third line of Gaudet, Levo, and Spooner. And fourth line of Beagle, Granlin, and Schaller. That means Berchi and Godobin are healthy scratches up front. Very similar players. Very small, shifty, skilled guys, but can't find their way in the lineup tonight. Berchi and Godobin and Tyler Mott still injured. So got about six healthy scratches, two or three guys injured. Uh, Chris Tan, of course, I forgot to mention, he's still injured. And that's what we're looking like for tonight. Jacob Markstrom making his start net, his 60th start of the season, which is pretty good, really good, actually. And then I expect Demko to play on Saturday. So those are the lineup changes for tonight. Vertanen in for Berchi and Rafferty in for Biega. Markstrom in for Demko, technically, as well. So three lineup changes. 
I put a poll up on quit, uh, Quitter. No, I'm not quitting. I pull, put a poll up on Twitter last night saying, how would you describe best describe the Canucks season? And I put four choices. I didn't explain them all. I just put the four choices out there and let you guys vote. And the four choices were um, very successful, better than expected. It had its moments, meaning not so great, and very disappointing. So again, uh, very successful, better than expected, had its moments, and very disappointing. Got 400 votes. 51% of you said better than expected. 41% said it had its moments. 5% said very successful, and 3% said very disappointing. So if you look at the two questions, uh, the, the four answers, you can kind of separate in the top and the bottom, right, positive and, and not so positive. You know, very successful and better than expected. 56% combined there and 44% combined for that had its moments and, and of course, very disappointing. So the fact that 51% of you, half of you said better than expected, that's where I would have voted as well. And it really speaks to expectations. You know, if you came in, to this season with very low expectations, especially the media, some of them pegging them for only 68, 69, 70 points, then obviously the Canucks have exceeded those expectations and therefore you would have voted for better than expected. And I think there's a lot of reasons why I think the Canucks have been better than expected. I've always said that Elias Pettersson with his breakout season, he started off really well and he's kind of dying down a little bit, but still a really good season, almost a point per game. You could argue that he's brought single-handedly brought hope to the club and maybe sped up the rebuild by a year. Better than expected, Quinn Hughes, we got to see his debut finally last week and he's, uh, you know, he's also giving us a lot of hope. I think Horvat had a year that was better than expected. And Brock Besser had a very good year coming off his rookie year. Um, so he had a really good year as well. Jacob Markstrom, certainly better than expected. And, and our, our three you know, midseason acquisitions of Shen, Levo, and Pearson, likely all better than expected. So it makes sense that the majority of you voted for better than expected. The other big vote, 41%, it had its moments. Yeah, that could basically impl be implying that it wasn't that good of a season, but there certainly were memorable moments. Pedersen scoring 10 goals in his first 10 games. That 7-6 overtime victory over Colorado at home in early November where Pedersen and Besser were having five-point nights each. You know, those kind of things. There was a night where Horvat, Levo, and... Sorry, Horvat, Erickson, and Pearson combined for 10 points. That was just recently. There was all of Jacob Markstrom's great starts. There was Thatcher Demko making his debut finally or getting more games more than just the one he entered the season with. There was the debut of Quinn Hughes as well, that overtime shift that brought everyone to their feet and his first assist in his first game. So there are a lot of moments that happened during this Canucks season that maybe didn't qualify as a successful season overall, but certainly a lot that we can latch on to and hang on to and look forward to for next season. So Canucks fans, I'd love to hear your comments below for this season for you. Was it a very successful one? Was it better than expected? Was it, it had its moments or was it disappointing? Leave a comment below. You can also talk about Brogan Rafferty. You can talk about Jake Vertanen playing on the left side. You can talk about the National Predators. You can talk about anything. You know that I'm going to read it. I might not always reply, but you know I'm going to read it. You know I'm going to react to it. And hopefully when, uh, when I can, I try my best to reply to the, to the comments as best as I can throughout the course of the day. So please, please, please leave a comment below. I always love to hear what you're thinking. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Tonight, Vancouver in Nashville, penultimate game of the year for Tannen and Rafferty and Markstrom in, Berchi, Biega, and Demko out. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. What am I talking about? Enjoy the day and enjoy the game. God bless and go Canucks go.